I have two major things I want to talk about with um, or music in general that I know are applicable um, across all of her pieces. Um, and the first is about trills. Mm-hmm. So maybe we could use the first line of pedals as an example. Right. Yeah, that's, it's very good uh, because, uh, um, first of all, there's one rule about her trills, that if, if there's a, just the word trill and a squiggly line uh, over a normal note, it's always a semitone key. Uh, never, never. It's always a semitone, unless she, she tells you that it's something else. Yeah. Then we have the the harmonic trills. Uh, uh, so here you start with with a um, trill like this. Okay. So we should hear the two notes and not just a, something. And then what happens, uh, uh, first of all, you, you need to be uh, sul, ta, sul ponticello, so very close to the bridge. Very slow bow. And then there's a glissandos that starts going from this trill. To this trill. And between and this, there are lots of uncontrollable uh, uh, harmonics that that depend totally on your bow speed and your on and your how close you are the bridge so as many as you can come out to get, uh, get to come out between those two the, it's the, the, the better it is the, the more accidents you you have there uh, you will never be able to, if you once felt that this was, that's really exactly what I want, mm -hmm. you will never find exactly that again, because okay. it all, it depends on so many conditions, on, on the acoustics of the room. Some, some days you feel that I can get a million uh, uh, accidental harmonics there, but sometimes you, you can't, so, so you just, but, but, but you have to know that you're going from here to, from there. And then from then on the second line, you go from this trill, you start pressing more and more. You come from this trill, which then you do a normal no, no listen to a G, A flat. Then you go towards, your bow goes up to Sultasto, so you go from Sul ponticello to sul tasto over the fingerboard, and now you start adding pressure. And then, little by little, you're, when you are at the top of your. Uh, I actually. Um, prefer to come away from the sultasto uh, during the overpressure. That was going to be my next question, yeah. because in this piece I noticed a lot there are crunches with sultasto, and what I noticed was I kept getting a subtone when yeah. I was trying to play. The, the problem with overpressure in sultasto is that you go from this to, to the subtone very easily. So, so, um, so one, one way of avoiding that is to releasing the pressure on the finger. It's a very delicate line, but then, then the, the idea of sultasto has to be relative when you do overpressure. You go to, you move to a place where you, you manage to avoid going to the subtone. 
Okay. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so I'm actually that's pretty technically not, pretty not soltasto, soltasto right. anymore. Okay. But but it's it's uh, it is because of the overpressure. Right. Because otherwise I would uh, be if I play soltasto and and sol uh, and overpressure mm -hmm. I will be playing three strings. <laughs> So I have to find a place where, where this is actually possible. Right, because that was actually something I found towards the end of line three, after the um, after the crunch disappears, but you're still playing, it still says sul tasto, but it's fortissimo, and I kept finding that I was, I was yeah, just that's playing right, all yeah. three strings So So anyway, but often when, when that is a danger, then then you have to some, you have to block the, try to block the open strings with your fingers here, uh, so so that that you avoid a little bit of that resonance. <laughs> now I actually have my, my first finger across the three strings so that <laughs> so that it doesn't because it's the open strings that resonate so easily. Right. If you if you if you if you just block the, the, the open string from resonating you already have a little more mm -hmm. leeway here. Uh, and then, uh, but then during the, uh, when you are at the um, uh, beginning of line three, you have to move from, from trill, I'm doing this now without the crunch. I move from a trill to, to, to a vibrato, but I do it like I start... I, I, I continue the trill while I'm actually already, I'm doing, I'm not doing a molto vibrato like this, I'm actually sliding with the finger, because it's meant, meant, to, meant to be a transition from the trill to not, no trill, but still sounding like a trill, and then a straight mm -hmm. uh, note. Um, can you talk a little about um, the speed of the trills? Because I remember um, when I was, learning one of Kai's other pieces, um, I, I felt like I wanted to be very studious and have a very regular, um, fast trill. And um, because there are so many trills in her music, I, I was getting very tired while I was playing it. So do you have any uh, insight into that well, like, um, speed of trill? And in Kai's music, very often you, if she asks you to do a trill, between two notes that, uh, that I mean, like for example, this. If it's too fast, the trill, it melts into one note. So you have to find a, a speed where one can actually hear the note, where they speak. These are two strong harmonics. So you can you have a choice. You can play it either slow or fast, or you can play, and they speak. But here, here you have one strong harmonic, and this is a slightly less strong. So this speaks a bit slower. So you have to adapt your sp the speed of your trill to what can be done. For example, if you have this trill which she doesn't have in this piece, but in other pieces, yes. You have to, again, in order to, for no, it not to just play the strong note, which would be this, then the, you have to play it a little slower. Otherwise, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. and you have to be careful to always lift the other finger up uh, when you play harmonic. With harmonic trills, right. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, all you hear is this, and we want to hear the two different notes. Okay. Um, can we go over the fingering in measure nine? Um, the one thing I find when I'm learning this piece is that I think I've found a fingering that works, and then I see what's coming next, and then I realize there's no way to get from the fingering that I found to whatever I need to get to. And then I have to change my fingering. And um, 
And then with, with line nine in particular, I, I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to do a trill the, in the middle of the bar where you have that double harmonic trill with a gliss down on the A string while maintaining a trill on the A string and on the D string. Right. Um, can we... <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's. Uh, before we go to the okay. uh, fingerings, I still want to say one thing okay. where, where I've had to uh, had to kind of give information to uh, is at the end of line three, when you when you finally get you do more frequent bow changes. So it's actually an accelerando of your bow towards a tremolo. So you, you go towards tremolo, and then she says tremolo as dense as possible. So you as fast as possible, and then ritenuto and that ritenuto means that you are slowing down the uh, the, the tremolo so that it it reaches this that that it's a tremolo that slows down to actually to to that speed so you go okay. then so so that's that's the ritenuto there it's not that you are you are counting like beats there. Right. You are slowing down the tremolo. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, where there, there were no f there's uh, this next passage with the, with the quarter tones, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of played. I've written myself fingerings down there, and I played by with the by the finger. <laughs> I, I, in, so that I, I know that I'm as close as possible with my fingers right. and I just do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. Okay. But anyway, now so now we go to uh, the end of line seven. Uh, yes, actually, I did have a question about that. Yes. Moving as imperceptibly as possible from tremolo to trill. So this is kind of like backwards. Well, it's interesting because trill is left hand, tremolo is right hand. Yes. So... So uh, we shouldn't notice when the tremolo stops and when the trill starts. Right. And we discussed, this is one of the things that I remember that, that we spoke on the phone uh, often, that, how, how, that she wants this to be a, like, just that the tremolo suddenly is a trill and, and that how do we do that? So that wh what's the most, uh, uh, what kind of magic must you do uh, to make that happen? And I, I, I tried everything and I realized that Actually, absolutely nothing. You do nothing. You stop tremolo and you start trilling. So okay. you. And it just becomes a trill. Uh, if because if you do something, if you try to do something, uh, it sounds awkward. Right. There's no way of doing it uh, without pointing out that he's dying. He's trying to do something so so just do okay. and there you are so so actually just you you should in a way forget what she says right don't move just, as imperceptibly yeah as possible. Just, just just change right okay okay that's uh, that's so then uh, then you have these um, okay line eight I think that there's no problem <laughs> find this then line nine I go on with this sorry right and so I you're sliding with the thumb I sliding with the thumb uh, I slide with the thumb until I get to this double trip And then I, I, so on the D string I do this, I first, I do this double trill and then, so you're uh, kind of creating the illusion of a trill. Yeah, I'm with creating with my thumb, this illusion. Which is actually 
the same as if I would. But at the same time. Now the problem is, of course, that this is. It's. I I I can't pretend that this is an absolutely regular movement with my thumb. And, uh, but it's it's the it's what I can offer. Uh, and and it, it, it does because because what she's doing is that she's asking us to uh, minimize uh, the the bow pressure, pressure right. so that you really <laughs> so that there are as many as many accidents that uh, that you can possibly get. With, with with these movements, so 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 that's that's actually uh, you can't get close. There's no way that you can get closer to what she's what okay. she's imagining there. So okay. uh, uh, and and I I don't I don't think that that um, I think that that uh, there would be like no better uh, uh, um, uh, notation for that either. Right. Well, yeah, that's. Uh it's very, it's very. Uh, if you if you want to be more precise with the uh, the problem with with notation is that the more precise you want to be with, with these kind of things, you are actually starting to work against uh, against uh, uh, the, the performance because because if you give too much information, you you lose you lose the uh, the 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 actual the music. Mm -hmm. You just then, then you start playing from detail to detail right, to detail exactly. to detail. Right. Uh, whereas it has, it has to, you it has to still be something that you see the musical gesture rather than a ton of uh, 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 separate instructions. Right. Um, <clears throat> can we actually go back to line eight for a minute? Um, yeah. One of one of my other major questions besides trills was the crunches, and we already talked about soltasto crunches. But yes. One of my other main questions about crunches, and this showed up in uh, in Cet Papillon, where you have to do a crunch in a non forte or mezzo forte dynamic, yes. and in this case, you have to do it in, in pianissimo. pianissimo. Yeah. Um, I could. I mean, I, it's it's very easy to do it uh, loud. <laughs> But if you know how to uh, just uh, you look for them it's actually possible to to control the the, the it's just a, it's a very delicate line and thankfully she has a trill and a glissando going because if if I was doing that on a uh, on a one held note Right. It's easy to, 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 to for the bow to, to stop, right. but uh, if I'm doing like <laughs> you you notice that uh, there's no uh, no crescendo happening at all. There's a crescendo mm -hmm. of of noise, right? And uh, uh, which which you can control, right? So it sounds like from what you're saying, one that you sort of just have to experiment with pressure and. Um, and speed of bow to find yeah. the right crunch. But I remember we talked about this before that her idea of crunch is not something that's supposed to be um, like here. It's not. Yeah, it's not unpleasant, or uh, it's not supposed to be aggressive. Here. Exactly, it's not an aggression. It's not, right. She says that very very nicely in a, in in one of the lectures where where she talks about the study of of the. Overtones and harmonics is is that she was concerned about underst understanding where the pressure or over pressure it the, by by adding pressure or going towards you are adding like overtones you get more and more overtones and when you add pressure you also add overtones right. until you get so many overtones that it actually becomes noise. Mm. It's not that you are destroying the sound, you are and you are kind of multiplying the sound. Just you are you are 
making the over, uh, overtones take over and just invade the sound right. and that becomes it becomes noise so so in in that sense it's kind of uh, uh, it's like going towards the essence of sound going really finding taking a pill of ecstasy <laughs> and 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 which is on, I can only imagine <laughs> uh, okay, let's point that out but uh, the, uh, uh, that getting into the really the, to the moment when where where you your 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 ecstasy of the sound really makes it break into a million pieces mm -hmm. okay yeah. now at line 10 <laughs> this is a, a typical place which i remember that when i practiced when i learned this mm -hmm. i had to learn it uh, detail by detail yes that i first learned learned the dynamics and the notes then the dynamics <laughs> always goes back to mezzo piano and diminuendo then I added this um, uh, uh, because if you try to do it all the time I've, I've seen so many students uh, uh, try to do it all at once and you end up forgetting most of the things all the time right. whereas if, if you learn it just like you and then you can you can learn this gesture that these two things ha two things happen at the same time, and then here. Um, that you 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 learn how how you add the pressure uh, in sul ponticello in uh, in order to get the uh, get get the crunch, mm -hmm. uh, and then. It's it's quite complex to learn that uh, that that you are doing these crescendo diminuendos, which are not which do not coincide with the sul ponticello or right. tasto or no, normale. So, but they, they you remember. So. Uh, and then on top of that, you have the. Ritardando then you have the tempo, uh, tempo tempos. changes, yes, yeah. and, and, and fermatas, and, and you name it, it's all there. Mm -hmm. But you just learn, learn one... Yeah, and then, uh, and then it finally it becomes one gesture. Right, right. Um, now, in line 13, I, I noticed, um, or at least it sounded like this in one of your recordings of it, that actually that high B... Um, I often play it as a often harmonic. Often play it as a harmonic. Yes. Um, is that was that is is that a technical decision or? Um, it was some. It was a decision. Okay, okay, I, I don't always play it nowadays as a harmonic. But at the beginning, I played it okay, regularly as a harmonic because of uh, because of the the uh, uh, pianissimo and uh, right. sul ponticello. It felt like. to start uh, without without mm -hmm. an, a, an accent or that it, it so sound it, it kind of starts without you noticing mm -hmm. it sounding so well, but it, when you when you learn your bow con when you have a really good bow, bow control you can also you can also play it as a, as a normal note so so that's right. just something that Probably uh, my decision came out of my own incompetence at the <laughs> beginning. Okay, <laughs> and then this this next part, I notice it, it takes just a massive amount of bow control and also being comfortable with these sort of unusual positions with the harmonics and natural notes um, and open strings. Um, mm. Yeah, it's uh, I, that's that's a passage that I, okay, I remember that it, it takes a takes a long time to get comfortable with this yes. this lento uh, section. Uh, you need you need just a kind of a a bow that does its own job, uh, no matter 
what kind of acrobatics you have to do with the right. with the left hand, so that you have just this. Uh, um, this constant speed where you can move um, I'm just doing an example I'm not playing the, the, the notes there but that where you can you can play these two strings and uh, 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 and go up and down but without changing the, sp the speed so right. so so that need ju you just need to like be meditating with your bow right. slowly and then you need to learn these sometimes you play them I actually I think I play it like this oh. I play it like that and then I just ease it in so um, so I go with a my thumb away so that I can play with the first finger I play the B harmonic and now I turn my thumb is already on the E flat and now I lift my hand up and I liberate the A string and now I move my thumb away so that I can the open G string and now I ease the there's a, there's a little bit of crunch there so during during that crunch I move my thumb and third finger so that I have a double harmonic when I come out of the crunch I have the double harmonic and then now I'm doing a tremolo and the this harmonic and now I do an extremamente flout and so lots of bow changes so it's actually you are you move as little as possible with your uh, uh, left hand but uh, actually most of those things happen in the same position right it's actually just they matter. all happen in the same position right. it's just uh, you do something that we are not taught to do in in the proper studies is to right. to is to is how you how you sort of liberate an open string and, uh, and that, that yeah that happens a lot in her music in her music yes you have to, you have to be prepared to be just just look at your fingers and see that okay yeah it can be done it's right. not like if you just if you just think of what you've done before right you know, but but these are actually not difficult or not complicated things at all it's just that we've not been asked to do them before right well i mean sometimes they, the one that comes to mind is the end of the second movement of said papillon where you have yeah. to do this uh, yeah yeah and and again once it's it's not that it's out. difficult it's just, it's just something that you you don't you didn't know that one could do that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then once you figure it out, then it feels like such a natural exactly, thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Um. Now, uh, at the end of this line 16, mm -hmm. it's very important to know that that there's a the, if you play the electronic version, the whole acoustic uh, changes there when you, when you get to uh, line, 17. line 17 and uh, the all the, all this huge reverberation dis suddenly disappears and, uh, and it's very dry so so that you need to you need to time your the way you do that uh, mm -hmm. whether you do it with a pedal yourself or with a person in the hall you right. need to know that that's that's a very a very uh, important uh, uh, point yeah, I did notice um, there seemed to be some very clearly defined sections yes, um, in yeah. this piece, individual pedals, as you... Uh, and uh, here it's, uh, the, it's what, what, what 
this is a, 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 a very good example of a play, uh, of a section mm -hmm. starting from line 17 and finishing in, at the end of line 22 right. is that it's phrases that have different lengths mm -hmm. and they all start with this right. and finish with finish with a, okay, somehow so it's like that was the first phrase i mean yeah. now i'm not playing it in tempo i'm just this is just a in, in way of demonstrating. The second phrase is a little longer. So that's how you have to play it so that we understand that these were two phrases. Now it's a third way of doing the third uh, 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 variation of doing the same thing. And it gets more complicated, complex every time. Right. <laughs> Here, uh, I actually don't um, don't do, don't do exactly of, uh, what she she all of these either natural harmonics or fourth harmonics or the third harmonics yeah. they they actually all produce the same F sharp and I find that uh, I use the, the 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 version that's easiest to okay. to find as a finger fingering because because I don't hear much difference between this and and this. Right. To me, to my ears, it sounds the same. So well, well, the first one, I don't do the fourth harmonic. I actually do it as a as a natural harmonic. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And the same in bar eight, in line eighteen at the. Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, uh, uh, I've done it so many times with her and, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that I know that she doesn't hear that, she doesn't insist that she hears the difference okay. uh, of these harmonics. Uh, the, okay, uh, that's good to know. Um, uh, and then, so, the, the, so these are all like phrase, 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 variation, and then right. all of them even... <laughs> It's again a phrase that right. that goes from from this to this. Right, and then it's interesting that it, it changes from the pits to the the arco. Now it starts. From now on, it's a. And then. So, so now this was the last time here in, in the middle of line 21 that we hear the F sharp. And then this, this, this is Yes, because this is like one of Kaikaya's nightmares that she, at, at almost every piece, that, like I, I always, uh, um, made this joke with her that that why is it that uh, for her a glissando that goes a double stop glissando where where you go past the fifth right uh, she always ha gets that idea and puts that in almost all of her cello pieces and that's the one thing that I've always said that it's basically impossible but it's actually not impossible it's not impossible <laughs> Basically, you should be able to do a crescendo that the yeah. top line just does that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in line twenty-one, I wasn't sure because the the two previous uh, uh, phrases, the start both with parts of twenty. Yes, well, they start with a slur, but also it's very clear that the low C is supposed to last the entire duration of that right. phrase. But in line 21, because it's even longer, it's not really clear where that low C is supposed well, to end. Well, uh, it's, it's true that she's not, she doesn't mention this, but, mm -hmm. but, but I take it that, that it lasts for four beats. That it, we are okay. not, uh, because uh, on, in line 8, 
it's a different thing. She she light, writes uh, 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 the D right. uh, D organ point lasts the whole line. Right. But uh, but she she just puts a, a little kind of a slur, a, a tie uh, from the note. Here she doesn't put a tie. So so what I do is that I think that the 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 um, the C finishes when you get to the uh, uh, in the middle of your F sharp here. <laughs> You you are you counted the four beats, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, the <laughs> here obviously you can't play the C oh, anymore. Right, of course. So yeah. so so I uh, I think that it just it disappears. Mm -hmm. But it's not something we notice. It's it's not yeah. something that we notice. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then again, you you have the same thing. You have actually the same phrases starting from this and. <laughs> And and uh, 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 which goes on in uh, uh, after twenty three, but but now you have a kind of a different study because you the acoustic again with the electronics is completely different, and also the you, you have to now learn this is this is a very complicated passage. So the notes are not so difficult, but but the combination of crunch, solfeggio, the dynamics, and and uh, and all of that with the left hand pitches is. Uh, uh, and the speeding of the that sometimes you have um, <laughs> this uh, the, at the beginning they these are grace notes so they are as fast as possible right. but then then uh, then the next group of grace notes gets faster, gets faster right, right. Uh, and the same thing and the, uh, the in the next phrase um, <laughs> and now <laughs> it needs to get faster so you need to be clear when it's as fast as possible and when it gets fast. Okay. Uh, and uh, because these are all the things that differentiate each, each phrase. Each phrase, exactly. Yeah. And. Um, um, and so here, for example, you get to the. In line uh, 25, you get to the F sharp in in, um, in sort of on the cello, you need to go so fast and then back to. And now you need to do a tremolo, tremolo going to sul tasto, but but with uh, with real flout and so try to keep a, find a different kind of a tremolo, no, not this kind of tremolo. Okay. And then, um, so this is what I've practiced a lot. This, uh, uh, so that's one point. And then this trem trill. So it's just an irregular. Again, we, we thought a long, uh, well, for a long time that how does one... Uh, she liked what I did, but I had no idea uh, how to notate that. Right. Seems like a good solution you can Yeah, so it's a, a kind of a, just an irregular. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and, uh, and again, when, once you play this, once you've played it a hundred times, then you start hearing it and seeing it as an as an architecture of just of just gestures and emotions and that lead from 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 the first uh, uh, phrase and then all of its variants to finally when you get and suddenly you are in a different world Uh, and that uh, that can then then you have to you have you have to be very careful just to to conserve that tranquility mm -hmm. where you get uh, from from these very aggressive aggressive beginnings of phrases uh, that uh, um, uh, ah one thing I should still say in in line twenty seven mm -hmm. I've often heard people doing a trill on the. <laughs> 
right. there. It doesn't. It's not a trill. It's, it's a glissando, but she wants a glissando with with a vibrato. Yeah, right. But still, only with one finger. Only with one finger, okay. yes. And then, then it's like somehow, although the 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 one, two, three, three last uh, uh, C pizzicatos and the gestures, they are still loud, but they go from four fortes to one forte, and and the last one is sul tasto di. So the last one is already you kind of give you you no longer have uh, the strength the energy, yeah. energy and you you've moved into this floating world mm. uh, and then the the rest is basically um, let me say maybe line twenty nine mm -hmm. the only thing is that you it starts with this trill. So here she says, uh, unusually, that uh, this is the only trill, one of these trills the way you don't need to do. Oh. Okay. So when she says lower finger, she doesn't mean. She doesn't mean. Thumb. Doesn't mean thumb. No. Okay. Okay. But because now you are supposed to do. So, okay. so now the distance, you are, you are playing a trick. Right. It's something else. It's, it's, a, it's an effect that we haven't had so far. Okay, okay. That, that makes sense. Because I, th I thought it was um, not yeah, lifting she, the she thumb, but you lift the one and two. And yeah, no, I, I, I don't think she would. Uh, um, no, no she, wouldn't, she wouldn't think that we would uh, do that. No, no. Uh, then, uh, then uh, the next thing that um, it's again the same thing in the line thirty, in the last line that you have this. Um, that you have this. And then you end up to a note. <laughs> um, a little bit, a little fermata on a, on a extremamente flautando, very flautando, and then, and now, now she's, now you again, you do the normal. <laughs> So n then, then you get to this. I'm trying to. I'm well, this this brings this brings me to something we talked about um, when we were working on said papillon that it seems like. You work on something enough, and you get the harmonics to, or your cello to sort of learn the harmonics. Yeah. But then, when you're performing, it may or may not happen, it, and yeah. that unpredictability is just something to embrace when you're playing. Exactly. Music. Yes. So, so that I never, I never panic there if I if I don't find this. That's what I'm aiming at. Toward. Right. But because I'm at the same time, I'm doing extremamente flautando. Right. Uh, and and um, the, it's not stable anyway. Right. And I want to get something that uh, th that is as close to an el electronic, uh, uh, pure uh, wa waves, sound right. waves. Uh, that uh, um, so so there's actually only. A little moment there when that perfect thrill might might, might be might happen. might happen, right. and then then you just you are you are more concerned about the accidents, and uh, and uh, and more, more 
I call them the accidents. Good, the good accidents. The good right. accidents. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I I don't know what the right word for the, those, but 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 all of these uncontrollable uh, uh, harmonics overtones mm -hmm. that that come out. Okay. So does this answer your question? Yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I think you answered. Answered my question. I'm I'm looking at the back. Oh, you know, actually, so at the end of line fifteen, I didn't. You so you do you are using thumb there. Uh, with the. <laughs> or do you do one? Yeah, I'm one two. I'm here. <laughs> Okay. Well, well, I think I think we've covered covered yes. covered a lot, and uh, we can look forward to the next next piece of plays. Yes. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.